Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, let's move on to our next caller. Yeah. Um, I see some really, really good ones, um, but proof of God always makes me excited. Oh. So I have got to go with Frode in Norway. Frode, Frod, how do you say your name? Ah, the same question as last week. Uh, it's Frode. Frode. Oh. Yeah, he's a repeater. I know. It was when you were on with Claire because I watched the show when I'm gone. Yeah. So <laughs> do I. Um, <laughs> Uh, what did you want to talk about this week? By the way, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Eric. Uh, hello, Jamie. Hello. How are I you? Don't, I don't want to forget uh, forget you. Oh, don't you? Unforgettable. Uh, <laughs> so, what, uh, what, what would I, you like to uh, talk about? Launch into this quick. Uh, I was listening back to uh, what I said last week, uh, and I kind of want to make uh, two or three uh, corrections of something I said last week. Also, I want to think, uh, uh, like, kind of bring up uh, another thought I have had. Uh, so last week, uh, I talked about how uh, ambivalence led me into religion and mm-hmm. how it can be somewhat confusing to to be so, so uh, ambivalent about things. And uh, uh, I think it was Eric that, uh, no, sorry, it was Jamie that made a joke after I, I hang up that I hope he doesn't uh, lose a spoon on the floor. And I, I, kind, I, I kind of made the, the same thing uh, last week, uh, mm-hmm. but it was kind of exa- exaggerated. But it is somewhat on that le- level that I feel uh, um, my life has been controlled by uh, ambivalence. For a second, and I thought you were going to say I, that you'd I, lost I, a spoon, and I was going to feel bad. But um, sorry. <laughs> no, but 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 uh, jokes aside, I I, I felt um, that I I I didn't make it clear that I felt uh, I feel like ambivalence and God is the same thing. Do you mean that the feeling of ambivalent, ambivalence is the same thing as in a supernatural being? That uh, in you know? yes. Wait. So the feeling itself is amb- ambivalence is God. Uh, well, I, I saw it. Yes. Yeah. So, so would you say that the feeling of ambivalence has any anthropomorphic qualities? Does it have eyes and ears? Does the feeling of ambivalence yeah. think or have emotions or aspirations? Uh, well, if you, uh, I think God has, if we, if we want to define God. Well, yeah. I think you, but you uh, just defined... Uh, is, it, is it better if I say God is the curse, uh, course of ambivalence better than... N- well, it, so if, if you're saying... God. Yeah, but, but if, if you just say it's ambivalence, then I would say that either A, we're anthropomorphizing emotions, at which point I would say that there are a whole lot better emotions that you can worship. Right? Um, right. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, excited, happy, loving, caring, uh, you know, a little horny. Well, we, we, something but it, better than ambivalent. Yeah. We, we hear a lot of uh, God is love uh, yeah. situation. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, what, uh, so, so you're saying that your God is ambivalent, like has the quality of someone who really doesn't care? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, is there, so actually, I, that I, that seems almost like a slight departure from what you said last time, because uh, last week you were talking about how your personal feelings of ambivalence um, led you to God, and you didn't quite say that God was, you know, the essence of ambivalence or the source of ambivalence. So, in what ways do you believe that God interacts with the world? Uh, I think uh, I think uh, God uh, talks to us through uh, the things we do. I think, uh, for example, uh, we, we talked a little about, uh, for example, sliding doors last time. He he can make us late for that uh, uh, train because he doesn't want us to go to it because he has another meaning for us. Like there, there, so, there's another reason. So, in what way is that ambivalence? Uh, 
in in the way that I I think he uh, he knows what is good for us, right? But uh, I I don't I don't uh, I don't think free will exists. I think okay. I think it's I think it's more that we are destined to do things, uh, and I think that's uh, why I have been become so ambivalent because I'm trying to listen to what God is trying to tell me. Okay, so I I actually then have two questions. Just a quick clarification: when you say we're destined to do things, do you mean? that because you don't believe uh, that free will exists in a deterministic universe, we will eventually do what we're going to do? Or do you mean that God has set a path that we will eventually do X, Ooh. and in order to guide us there, he will shut the you know, subway doors early? Uh, yeah, more the second thing, yeah. Okay, Definitely. and then uh, secondly, I would say, um, you're saying that ambivalence uh, is something that... Um, has led you to God because you're being ambivalent because you care about um, what God wants and you're trying to do with that. To me, that's the opposite of ambivalence. That's caring in the you know will of this God that you believe exists. So what is it that you're uh-huh. saying you're ambivalent to? Uh, but uh, I, I kind of want to pick up what you said there. Mm-hmm. I mean, what way? Well, so if if a person was ambivalent to God to a God they believed in, they would say, "Well, that God exists, but eh, I don't really care what it wants." But what you're saying is, "I'm ambivalent. There's a God that exists." Is ambivalent and not I, caring though? Well, ambivalence actually uh, caring a little too much. Well, here. So, what is it that you're using the word ambivalence to mean? Let's let's cut through the. Uh, um, Definition. Uh, for me, uh, ambivalent is is, is uh, uh, seeing a choice and not have the ability to make it because you know you don't know the outcome of it. Ah, okay. So, so you're did, using it to mean something like indecisiveness, right? Okay. So, but if your God created a deterministic universe, wouldn't your God have decided everything that's ever going to happen? That seems like the opposite of ambivalent. The way that you're using it. No, uh, I'm not saying that God is ambivalent. I'm saying that he's the source of ambivalence. Well, if if your God created the universe, I would probably say that your God would be the source of everything. No? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't want to create a straw man, but would you say that that statement is true? <laughs> uh, uh, can you repeat the statement, please? Sure. If, you're, if, if we're talking about the same kind of God that most people do, that God would be the source of everything, not just ambivalence, right? Right. Or, or are you polytheistic? I mean, what's like? W- would you say that that God created everything, not just ambivalence? Yes. Okay. Yes. So then, I feel like well, this might be a bit of a red herring, uh, jumping onto ambivalence when we're talking about the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-not doing Creator of the universe, right? Mm, other than that, uh, it's what brought me into uh, a God. Uh, I mean, because right now it feels like your God is hiding in the margins of what can and can't be tested, right? It, it, it would be the God of stubbing your toe, right? I, I mean, it, it really feels yeah. like um, if you can build a framework where a God is not testable or is not uh, detectable, um, then I would say that framework is unnecessary over the idea that you know any god could exist at all. It just feels superfluous. It feels like it's more than necessary. You, you know, it, it's just you'd need to make a lot of logical leaps to be able to get to that over not that. Uh, I'm 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 not sure if I understand you. Um, sure. So um, so let's say that uh, I'm late to work. Right? right. Um, and I'm late to work because I slept late because I was up late, late playing Red Dead Redemption 2, which I've been doing all week. And uh, I just right. slept through my alarm, right? Is it more likely that I was up late, late playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and slept through my alarm? Or on top of that, or, or would it be I was up late, late and I slept through my alarm 
because the all seeing, all knowing, all creating, oh, you okay. know, creator of the universe, yeah. right? Who created a deterministic universe wherein that we all, yeah. you know, follow some elaborate plan, um, planned that I was going to be late that day, right? Uh, there's one that is much more simple and much more believable than the other. The other has a shit ton of baggage, doesn't it? Well, uh, uh, I, I really don't want to go into uh, contra uh, factual uh, proof. But, well, but but uh, but so long as you're discussing a god, you are discussing counterfactuals. Right, because the only way that we can entertain the idea of this God is if we listen to someone's counterfactual. We listen to them. If this God exists, then this is why it's it should be true. Right? We're not coming up with the God definition. We wait for people to call in so that they can give us their definition for a God, so we can analyze it and determine whether or not that it, that it's a good thing to do. And as far as epistemolo epistemology. I would not want to get in the habit of assuming a whole bunch of extra crap on top of things that I don't have evidence for. So, do you want me to define God then? Yeah. That would be good, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, God, for me, is uh, a source uh, of... I, I, I'm, I'm not going to use a he or she because I think it's a it. I think it's a source of all things. I think it's the source of good. I think it's the source of, of evil. Uh, I don't think it uh, have uh, any big interests uh, in us other than playing uh, Sims, more or less. Uh, uh, and um, I don't believe in the God in the Bible uh, because I, I I I see I see no proof for him. I see I see a lot of proof for the God that I I I uh, am explaining as um, all knowing, all controlling, all um, powerful. Okay, so now. I, I have a couple of things that I have to address and I'm a little confused because earlier you were talking about how God might um, guide a person that doesn't have freed will by forcing the subway doors closed um, earlier than they would. And just a moment ago, you've said that God doesn't actually have that much interest in human beings. I think you said other than playing Sims. Are you just addressing um, whether or not a, you know an all-powerful God that you believe in Loves humanity, or right? I, I okay. don't. I don't especially think he loves humanity because I. I, I don't believe in in the Jesus fable either. To to be honest, I don't okay. see any. So, um, so uh, I'm wondering yeah. how much you've looked into arguments for and against the existence of a god, particularly an omni god, right? Because there's a problem when a person. You haven't, but when a person presents a God that is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good, which is that bad things happen to people that are completely beyond their control. People are ripped apart by tornadoes, for right. example. Um, but it appears that what you're saying is, well, God is all-knowing, and God is all-powerful, and sometimes he gets bored with that particular Sims character and rips them apart with a tornado. Yeah. Okay, or so, takes the ladder out of the pool so they can't get it. Or takes the ladder out of the pool. Or, or start the house fire build, and take out all the doors. Yeah, or builds a counter around them in the kitchen and then time speeds up and then they starve right. to death. Frode, um, I'm not talking to you, but all of you assholes watching, you know you did it. I did it. It was wonderful. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I never I did loved it. That's well. I, love, I, I love playing the fence. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, but but as I was saying, it's it's an interesting answer. But again, I think one of the things that you and I and Claire talked about last week, and you know, sorry to to throw that at you, Eric, um, is we talked about how it seemed like your uh, desire to examine and your belief in a god led from some anxiety that you had about what the consequences of of actions that you took Bye. would be. Um, we recommended a couple of resources. I'm not sure whether you looked into or, or utilized any of them. Um, I did, yeah. Oh, okay. How did that go? And which ones did you use? Uh, 
I I I, I looked into uh, 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 one of the things I looked more more into was my own like fear fear of of uh, ambivalence as you call it because as I talked to you last week it is overpowering and it is what is kind of controlling me and and I looked into it and I I I I kind of I kind of feel more open for atheism after we talked because. I feel uh, uh, it isn't a logical step that I'm taking. Uh, I want, uh, I want as the last listener or the last caller in, I want to believe as many false things as you know possible. So um, I think I've gone from 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 oh I am a hundred percent correct to. Uh, at least uh, fifty. <laughs> That's yeah. good. So here's here's what I will say before we go, which is before we sorry before we continue, because um, uh, mm. I think there's there's probably a lot more to be um, said in this call. Uh, one of the things that's very stressful for human beings is. Um, in any situation, realizing we were wrong, particularly about something that we think is important, particularly about something that we've stated we believe in publicly or have any sort of emotional weight on. It's why it's, um, you know, emotionally burdensome for someone to figure out that another human being uh, doesn't love them, right? Human beings go throughout life not being romantically loved by most of the people they meet, right? So it's not that, ooh, there's another one, because that happens every time a baby is born. It's that this person I thought loved me doesn't. And it's a part, in many cases, in you know, uh, very intimate relationships, it's a part of the way they view the world and the way they live. And that kind of psychological distress also occurs when a person who has spent years and years of their lives devoted to a church or whose entire worldview and epistemology is based on the existence of a god, if that person comes to the conclusion, well, I don't believe that a god exists because I don't think there's good reason to believe that a god exists, there's a lot of psychological barriers um, and you know emotional pain that comes with that. And even before they can get to that conclusion, those psychological barriers and that emotional pain stops them from getting to that conclusion. And so what I will say, in an attempt to alleviate um, any kind of emotional pain and psychological barriers as much as I can is, if you come to that conclusion or if you don't, we're here for you and there's an enormous amount of online communities, particularly the ones at the ACA, that are here to support you. You know, mm -hmm. my shoulders are tear proof and padded, so I'm here. Not for you. true. Um, the <laughs> I've used his shoulders. He's a, he's a good person to cry have, to. But they have uh, spiritual padding. I, um, that, oh sorry, that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just knew that would derail him. Okay. But Frod, what I or uh, fruit, I can't. I can't do the. It's probably spelled with an umlaut, and my pronunciation is off. But the the last thing I'll say in this bit before. Um, I think Eric is eager to chime back in, is keep thinking about it. And if your desire is first and foremost to believe what is true rather than what is false, to believe what is true rather than something that might make you feel better, um, keep pushing that. Yep. And, and as far as... Uh, the only other thing that I want to add is um, something from my own life experience, Right. My own life experience had me at a place where I was looking at a puzzle, and the puzzle is trying to determine what is true about the world around me. And I had this piece in my hand, and it was God, and I was trying desperately to find where it fit. And it took me a long time to get there. It took me a long time to find out that it doesn't belong in the puzzle. You know, you don't have to keep this baggage to try and find where it fits. And that's okay. It's okay to ask ask a really concrete question, mm. uh, and I feel I feel I feel I kind of know the answer to this already. What's up? Um, if if there is no God, mm -hmm. let's say there is no God, uh, does that make uh, my uh, ambivalence less real? So I, I think that where you are with the world looks the same 
um, with, you know, if, if you were to ha- believe in a God that doesn't do anything, then removing that God really wouldn't change anything. It's basically having the exact same effect as a God that doesn't exist at all. Right. But the reason why I am ambivalent, I think, is because of God or my belief in God. So just to clarify, um, when you're talking about how you feel ambivalent, do you mean uh, your um, difficulty in making decisions or your ability to make decisions um, knowing that my diffi- difficulty, yeah, the, the right. difficulty of me making a decision is because I believe that God has a plan for me, and therefore I, I have a harder time deciding than a lot of other people that I know that are ages that are not thinking about their uh, decisions as much as I do. I, I well, would say that whether you're a Christian or not, that is not a good way to live. Really, honestly, there there is no ideology that would make that a good way to live. Um, and I, and I'll tell you that when I was in church, one of the one of my pastor's favorite stories was he said that there was somebody that was in a flood, right? And the flood was coming, and he knew it was coming, and he said, you know what? That's okay. God will take care of me. So he had the chance to evacuate, and he didn't. And then all of a sudden, he was stuck in his house, right? He was stuck in his house, and the water was rising, and. Um, he, he had a neighbor with a four by four said, come on, we can still get out of here. He said, no, God will take care of me. The water rose to the second floor. And um, there, was, there were neighbors in a boat and they said, you know, uh, come on, we'll get out of here. And he said, no, God will take care of me. The water rose and he was on his roof and a helicopter passed by and they said, come on, let's go. And he said, no, God will take care of me. And he drowned, right? Mm-hmm. Now here's, here's where we separate because my pastor liked to say that God said, oh, I sent a helicopter and a boat and this and that. You didn't do anything. But as an atheist, I'd say, well, that was just stupid because you passed up all of these different chances to do for yourself. But as a Christian, as an atheist, anywhere along the way, waiting for someone else's plan, right? Giving up your ability to make a choice for yourself, I don't think would be wanted whether you're a Christian or not. But if if uh, I, I'm not asking you to to try to imagine that you're a Christian, but I'm kind of doing that in a way. <laughs> if you work, uh, if you believe in a higher power, wouldn't your uh, responsibility to make a choice be bigger than it is now as an atheist? I think that if you had a God that cared so much about what you following their plan then that God would go out of their way to make that plan clear. But if your God wants to hide the message in your alphabet soup, I really don't think that that's worth um, following. That's a really good point. I never thought about that. So, all right. We've been on this call for a while. Before we uh, uh, um, move on, you said... Uh, you're, you're comparing how responsible a um, person would be based on whether they were believed in a God or not as far as their decision making. And you were saying that a person mm-hmm. might be more responsible for their decision making if they were a Christian. Did I catch mm-hmm. that correctly? Yes. I, I think the opposite is true. So it may be that I've misunderstood some of the things that you're saying, but if you have trouble making decisions and you believe that a God is going to be there and dictate the outcome, then it seems like that would be easier to make whatever decision for whatever reason, knowing that you can throw up your hands and say, you know, God wills it. Um, But if you're an atheist and you believe that there isn't a God that's going to affect the outcome, that human decisions and human actions affect other humans, and ultimately you have to take responsibility for that, it seems like you would put more effort into decision-making. So it's yeah, in- I never thought about it that, that way at all, I, I, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I think, Rock on. yeah, we've got a couple other calls Damn, we want to get callers. to. Yeah, this has been a great... Right, I right. don't know. I hope that you will be a third-time caller. Yes, absolutely. Friend. We had fun. I hope I, I didn't offend you. I, I can be a little pushy. Eh. No, no, no. All right, so we... we you just made, made me think, and <laughs> like Good. I said, I want, I want to think more, so... 
Yeah, so we're going to let you go. Um, Definitely. And I hope that you have a happy week. Take care, brother. Bye. That was nice. That was a nice call. Right? Yeah. Um, so I want to read some patrons. I think it's about time Ooh, to read patrons. We still have a whole more show, so... Yeah, we've got a stay lot more tuned. show. But uh, I want to thank Nando Gonzalez, Nando. our Janet Reyes, David Arland, Lynn Ann Cross, and Dale Smith. You are our top five patrons, and we thank you so much. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to make this happen, really. Mm-hmm. Patreon has been the biggest spike for us in the last three months. I mean, holy crap, you can see us a little clearer, at least on on, on close-ups, because we have a better camera now. We were able to get appropriate lighting, mm-hmm. and we're get working the kinks out of the green screen. I mean, we've been able to... They've been able to hire me. I get to do this full-time. This is my dream job. I'm living my dream life. Mm-hmm. And it's because of wonderful, amazing patrons like you. If you would like to become a patron, please go to patreon.com slash talk to me. Even a dollar an episode is huge. It really does help. And I just, I for those of you who are, I can't thank you enough. For those of you who are going to sign up, I can't thank you enough. And for those who can't, that is okay too. I uh, Last time I asked for this, people actually did it. And it really did make a difference. Yes. If you're listening to this as a podcast, go and rate the show yes. uh, on Google Play and on iTunes. And whatever chance you get, Stitcher or whatever, upvote it. Subscribe. Yeah. Share. It gets us out there so more people can see us. Particularly now, because it is only a matter of time, and this happens to, I think, all, if not most, um, shows that are on YouTube, and particularly those that are podcasts on Apple Podcasts, before um, a Christian comes through, I've seen this happen, sees the description of the show and goes through rates the show poorly, and then puts a one-star rating on every single episode without listening to them. So if you could get in before that happens and totally mix up our average... I've actually seen shows tank. Fantastic, yes. For that, yeah. Oh, my... Yeah, all right. Uh, Ready to move on to the next caller? (laughs) Uh, Only only, uh, after I repeat this, because someone in the live chat has said, I I do my best to avoid this because it's not as fun for the viewers, but Hmm. uh, your money goes to letting us abuse Jamie more than he can handle. Um, That's all I can. That is hilarious. Okay, so if we're talking about the live chat... They need a lot of money. Bring it... If we're talking about the live chat, Janet, I know that Red Dead Redemption 2 is Yeehaw Skyrim. And it's awesome. (laughs) It's awesome. That does not make it worse. (sighs) And also, I've been watching this troll try and do everything but call in. You can always call in, friend. But if you can't, I really can't help you. Talk to us here. What a wimp. 